Hey there, everyone. Uh, this is your Yankee Hardcore Pipe Bomb Messiah here with you on this Wednesday. And uh, we are going to get into another week and the third episode in this series of Who Killed WCW. And, of course, this week's episode introduces you to Vince Russo and... Uh, Let's get into a little bit of a recap on what happened in last week's episode. Of course, we all know that we ended last week's episode with Eric Bischoff being fired. And WCW uh, already in the losing end of the Monday Night War with the WWF. So, as we go in here... Uh, we go back into 1999. Uh, Brad Siegel says that WCW was one of the many things that he was responsible for. And it was the thing that he liked the least. And he talks about the fact that Eric Bischoff um, was the glue that held WCW together and was fired. So, Brad Siegel, after Eric Bischoff was fired, he had to run WCW, and he didn't want to run WCW. So, what happened was, Bill Bush was the interim guy who was going to run WCW, and he was the acting COO. Now, Guy Evans... As we all know, who wrote that book about uh, who um, about the rise and fall of WCW? Of course, many uh, people have written books about WCW's history, and what he talked about was that Bill Bush, um, that the first major move that he did was picking up Vince, Vince Russo, and um. They didn't mention Ed Ferrara here because Ed Ferrara was another guy that was part of WCW's history. And Bret Hart talks about that, oh, he got the call and that, oh, Vince Russo was a creative genius. So, The Rock... um. He talks about the fact that he remembers when Vince Russo left the WWE to go to, to go to WCW. And he thought that it was great for Vince Russo. But the fact that this is a professional wrestling business and this shit happens all the time. Now DDP goes on and says that he was also excited that Vince Russo was coming in, and the same thing with Conan. He he was happy that Vince Russo was coming in. So everybody that was in that WCW locker room at that time, uh, they were all excited that Russo was going to come in. Now, what they did was, um, we're going to go in, and we're going to go in into a little bit of a time-traveling uh, adventure here for you guys. So what happened was, Let's go seven years early, back to two, 1992. Uh, Vince Russo, uh, they they give a little bit of a history on Vince Russo. Uh, Vince Russo had a degree in journalism. Uh, if you do remember, he did write for the WWF magazine at that time. And what he would do was... Uh, he would sit in, and this is while they were writing the TV scripts, and he knew that the creative in WWF at that time was so bad. And what he decided to do was, you know what, I'm going to write my own angles in the WWF magazine that had nothing to do with what we're seeing on TV. So Vince McMahon... Uh, what happened was, the story was that uh, Vince McMahon called Vince Russo in for a meeting. 
uh, told him, um, you know what, I want, I, I, you know, the, the stuff that you write on the Raw magazine, I want this to be on my, uh, on my TV, on WWE's TV. And then we get the mention of Ed Ferrara. Now, Ed Ferrara was a legit television writer, according to Vince Russo. Now, Vince Russo talks about that. What WCW at that time was doing was real. And that it had a sense of danger. And he was influenced by what WCW was doing at the time. And talks about how people were switching from WWF to WCW. And the idea was that you could not give the fans the chance to change the channel, or they might not come back. Now, Vince Russo, we all know the history. Um, when it came to the Attitude Era, he was the head writer during that era. Um, when WWE was making, you know, they were making a profit. Um, so what happened was, we all know in April of... 1999, they did the um, the plot for SmackDown, and once SmackDown got you know that Thursday night on um, the C on the CW network, Vince Russo couldn't write for another show because Vince Russo was saying that you know what, um, I'm burned out. I'm not seeing my kids, so. Vince McMahon had expected not only Vince Russo, but also Ed Ferrara to write another show. And he was never offered any additional money. And Russo started wondering if, hey, does Vince McMahon really care about me? Um, because I know I care about Vince McMahon. Or is it the fact that Vince McMahon is now making money? And you actually... Um, there was a story in here, too, that he actually got very emotional in Vince McMahon's office. And... Then he called um, his connection to WCW. And Dwayne The Rock Johnson talks about the fact that Russo had to do what was best for his family. And that's where he was given control of uh, WCW at that time. So what happened was Vince Russo talks about the fact that WCW... This is going to be a great challenge. And he saw, which by the way, we all know what this episode is, the New Blood. Because he saw New Blood in WCW. Um, the fact that these New Blood wrestlers, that they were stuck in the middle. And they couldn't really go in and... In Vince McMahon's words, you know, they couldn't get that brass ring. So, he goes to WCW. Um, all the mid-card wrestlers there, of course. Dean Malenko, Chris Benoit, Conan. Uh, they're all coming up to him. And Booker T's like, you know what? Booker T's like, you know what? He He's putting over... The younger wrestlers. And. The brass agreed that there was more talent there. Than people knew. And. He talks about how. You know. I, I look at. Hulk Hogan for the first time. I was looking at him for the first time. And. He knew that Hulk Hogan did not trust him. Because he knew that Hogan. 
would not believe a word that he would say. And he knows that Bischoff was responsible for that. So, here we go. This is where things got... Uh, I was like, you know what? This is going to get spicy here, folks. Um, I'm possibly, partially responsible for causing Eric his job. Now, Kevin Nash, now, apparently, I am going to say this right here. I truly believe, and I have seen this uh, in Reddit discords. I have seen this on Facebook. Kevin Nash, I think this dude was freaking stoned when they were interviewing him. I, I truly believe that. And he said that he always liked Russo. But he told Vince Russo, you're not in Kansas anymore. Yes, you are Oz in WCW. Y'all remember the infamous Goldberg that Sid was doing on that Monday Nitro? Why me? Why me? Why me? Y'all remember that moment. Now, going back to Vince Russo. Vince Russo said, you know what? I have a great plan. And you know what? You always, he always had this Jerry Springer part of what he was going to do with WCW. Now, he was a fan of Jerry Springer. And of course, you know, Jerry Springer around that time was so popular, especially in the late 90s. I remember I used to watch Jerry Springer at 10 o'clock at night here. Howard Stern would come on at 11 o'clock on the E! Network. And he had a three-month plan, Vince Russo. I got a three-month plan to fix WCW. And the wrestlers were like, you know what? This is a shift. Because now this show is going to be louder and it's going to be faster. And Vince Russo knew that uh, the numbers... He, he knew about it because they were out there for anyone to see. And they went up in his first three months. So, talking about a three-month plan. And Vince Russo's first Monday Nitro in charge, by the way, was October 18, 1999. Um, and it looks like the ratings were the same. With some up and downs. Over those three months. And he did talk about. Yeah you know what. It, this was a slight change. And he took WCW. In the direction that. Corporate did not like. Because Brad Siegel said. That. Yeah I Brad Siegel said. You know what I had. This positivity. That. This is going to, uh, maybe this is going to help us in the ratings, but it ain't going to be enough because WCW is not advertiser friendly anymore. But Vince Russo was like, you know what? My job was to make the show the best that it could be. Because he wanted to appeal to an entire wrestling audience. Now Conan comes in and says, you know what? Russo wanted to get the fans who weren't watching wrestling. And, you know, of course, he's going to bury the Julie Bagwell on a pole match. 
And if y'all remember the Pinata on a pole match. And then Booker T's like, you know what, Vince Russo, I think he was just trying to entertain himself. And stop the presses. Because Bill Goldberg and Bret Hart, they did agree on something. Because Bret Hart called Vince Russo an idiot. And Goldberg called Vince Russo a shit stain. Because Goldberg felt like, you know what? I believe that he was there to kill WCW. And y'all remember Seven, which was uh, Dustin Rhodes... You know, when he was staring in the room of a little boy. Yeah, that actually happened in WCW. There was things that Seven did. So, executives down in Cherno, they talked about they talked about how Russo, they didn't, he didn't have Vince McMahon as a buffer. And Vince Russo was like, you know what? J.J. Dillon, and he noted this, that J.J. Dillon and Kevin Sullivan were having meetings and run into the office. Now, Bill Bush told Vince Russo they wanted him to work with a committee. Then Vince Russo was like, you know what? My contract here. You see this contract? I'm head of creative. And I don't want anything to do with a committee. So Vince Russo was like, I'm going home. And you guys can figure out how you could pay me. So Kevin Sullivan takes over. In creative. And Kevin Sullivan. The first thing that Kevin Sullivan wanted to do. WCW has to get back into wrestling. And Russo was saying that. You, when. The Radicals. And I talk about the Radicals. And Chris Benoit. Dean Malenko. Perry Saturn. And Eddie Guerrero. And when they noticed that he wasn't there anymore, of course those guys, they went ballistic because they knew that they were going back as Mick Connors. Kelvin, Kevin Sullivan said that they were a big pot. Those guys were a big pot of WCW. And that they weren't going to put in they weren't the NWO. They weren't the Outsiders. They weren't Hulk Hogan. They weren't Randy Savage. And Kevin Sullivan was like, you know what? They may have became names like that. And then Russo brings up Kevin Sullivan throwing the group a bone when he made Chris Benoit, the WCW champion. And of course that didn't work because remember what happened with the, rad the, ra the Radicals? They asked for their releases and guess what? They all went to Monday Night Raw. They all went to the WWF. And Eric Bischoff actually saw it that night because he was in a restaurant. With his wife. And he actually saw that on the screen. And Eric Bischoff was like. You know what? WCW just hit rock bottom. And he told his wife. You know what? I know they're going to call me. 
and then we go to commercial. So, as I mentioned, we all talked, Dave, I did mention about, you know, the Radicals. Uh, by the way, it was that Monday Night Raw in Pittsburgh. Um, it was a big move, and that's what DDP, DDP and Booker T had said. Conan said that the office screwed up because WCW felt like they didn't need those guys. And when Vince Russo had left WCW the first time around, that's when the ratings went down. Oh no, they're not there yet. So Brad Siegel said that all the decisions were made by him. And someone had told him, oh, bring back Eric Bischoff. Now, Brad Siegel was like, you know what? My relationship with Eric Bischoff, it was always good. And I always wanted to bring him back as a consultant. Eric Bischoff had told Brad Siegel, I would like to come back. But I'm not going to be an employee of WCW. Because things are crazier now over there. I'm just going to report back to you and nobody else. Dad accepted the terms and asked Eric Bischoff if he would meet with Russo to see if they could work together. Now, Vince Russo was like, you know what? I never thought that me and Bischoff, that we would work, that things to fix WCW would work. Um, and he also said that Brad had never told him that Eric was his boss or had the final say. Because Eric Bischoff was saying that he was hired to oversee Vince Russo in the creative process. And then Brad Siegel was like, you know what? My memory was kind of sketchy. But if Eric came back, he had to approve it. So Eric Bischoff was like, you know what? Vince Russo, this guy's charming. You know what? And I think we're going to make it work. So, of course they mentioned um, the big reboot. On Monday Nitro, where Vince Russo and Eric Bischoff hug. And Eric Bischoff was like, things were worse when I came back to WCW. And then, of course, they showed the infamous moment. Y'all remember the blood that was supposed to fall on Kevin Nash and it missed... Kevin Nash was like, take that clip and show it after the finger poke of doom. And tell me what really killed WCW. You could really see how pissed Kevin Nash was when, when they did that part of the interview right there. Eric Bischoff was like, you know what? There was no hope. So... With this reboot, and Eric Bischoff talks about it. So the reboot was that they were going to have the Millionaire's Club versus the New Blood. So the Millionaire's Club was the old of WCW. The New Blood obviously was the young. And Vince Russo talks about that this was inspired by things that had been going on in the professional wrestling business since day one. So you had a guy like Shane Douglas, the franchise, former ECW champion, cut and shoot promos on Hulk Hogan. 
DDP was like, you know what? We were making money because we earned our spots. Booker T then brings up uh, the promo that Hulk Hogan did where he said he was getting older, but so was everyone else in the back. Booker T got it right there. But he wanted his work to get ahead and not his politics. Vince Russo knew that there would be politics. But not to the extent that he witnessed. He still wanted to do all that he could to get those ratings up. So, this is where we go into... Ready to Rumble, folks. We all remember that. So, Ready to Rumble. I'll be honest with you. I only saw the movie when it... When it came out on VHS, I didn't watch it at the movies. I rented it. And um, I thought the movie was fine. I'm going to be honest with you. So, this is where you get David Arquette. So, David Arquette. <coughs> excuse me. Big actor at that time. Most famous for being in the Scream franchise. At that time, was also married to a big-time actress and Courtney Cox, who was also in the screen movies. And David Arquette said that he never wanted to be a wrestler, except when he was a kid. And that the plan was to tie the movie into what was really happening with Monday Nitro. So... The idea was of a tag team match with Eric Bischoff and Jeff Jarrett going up against DDP and David Arquette. And at the meeting, went fine. Russo was there by himself when Tony Schiavone, yes, we all remember last week, we talked about how Tony Schiavone said the butts in the seats. Tony Schiavone... And this is what I'm going to just say. And I'm going to say what I said last week. They, I don't know why Tony Schiavone is not in this documentary. But I kind of really feel like this is where Tony Schiavone should have explained himself here. That Tony Schiavone came up to Russo. And that Tony Schiavone pitched the idea of David Arquette winning the WCW title. So, there is who you can blame. Or plot, I guess. Russo then brings everyone back in for the meeting. And he says 100% of the people in that meeting agreed with Tony Schiavone's idea. Eric Bischoff isn't sure how the idea generated. And he said that it was an elaborate way... To promote Ready to Rumble. He didn't see the harm in it. DDP on the other hand. Thought it was a joke. He even laughed at it. And he told. Everybody that. This is a bad idea. And he's right on that. It was a bad idea. And even David Arquette can't agree with him on that. Really. That's the truth. Then we go into a commercial. So. After the commercial. We're in. WCW Thunder. David Arquette pins Eric Bischoff. In a tag team match. And becomes. The WCW world champion. And of course there was going to be backlash. From the fans. And of course those wrestlers in the locker room. David Arquette. 
then talks about, you know, yeah, I'm in the locker room area, and I'm in shock. But he's also excited. And then asks Booker T, how many times have you been a champion? Wow. I cannot believe he said that to Booker T. But then Booker T had told him, I've never been a champion. I've never been the WCW champion. And that's when you saw David Arquette, his tone, like, changed right there. So we go back to our friend, Guy Evans. And Guy Evans said, you know what? That's another nail in the coffin of WCW dying right there. And of course people are going to be upset about it. Because Vince Russo had told those people. It puts eyes on the product. Conan even said. It's not going to put eyes on the product. And Vince Russo, and this is actually true, because when David Arquette won that championship, David Arquette was on the front cover of USA Today. And Vince Russo was like, you know what? That would have never happened in a million years. And then he's talking about the fact that, you know, I'm writing a television show. And that's what you guys needed. Eric Bischoff talks about, you know what, the wrestling audience, they didn't appreciate it. And it was the hardcore fans who he's not dismissing. Because I guarantee you, the hardcore wrestling fans, when they saw that, they were like, what the hell is going on with WCW? Because Eric Bischoff was looking at the bigger picture. And felt like, hey, you know what, WCW? I think we could handle a few weeks of bad press. Eric Bischoff said that he didn't stop it and participated in it. And he also had to take the blame as well. And yes... Vince Russo even said, this is where I'm like, really? Really? He said that in 2024, he would do the same thing today. And that he didn't care about the anger of the fans and yelled back that David Arquette only had the belt for like a week. And didn't want it. Oh, what would you do in 2024, Russo? You would put the championship belt... Uh, uh, if you were running WWE, what would you do? You would put it on Logan Paul. You, you may put it on Jake Paul. Or any celebrity. That's if you were working with Vince. But you know what? If you're working with Paul Triple H Levesque, you know that's not going to happen. And and they showed David Arquette cutting a promo where he wants to give up the championship belt And he wants to see someone like Booker T deserve it. Booker T said that David Arquette was his biggest cheerleader. I got to give David Arquette props for that. And, And that goes all the way back to what I mentioned. That backstage where David Arquette asked Booker T if he ever won a WCW championship. It's like David Arquette was lobbying for Booker T to become the champion. And Booker T, 
Booker T had said this. He started in the bottom of WCW. And he was doing something that he never dreamed of. He never dreamed of being a professional wrestler. So what did they do to Booker T? They made him G.I. Bro. Yup. Y'all remember G.I. Bro? He was part of that group, Misfits in Action. And this is what I got to respect about Booker T. He said that he just wanted to do what they asked. And he figured that hard work would get him where he wanted. And he knew that the goal of being a world champion in WCW was going to be far off. Because of his skin color. But Vince Russo. Puts over Booker T. And said. Oh yeah. Everybody loved Booker T. And he's talking about everything. Or everyone. Gunning. For that person on top. And you know who that person was? Hulk Hogan. Because Hulk Hogan did everything that he could do to protect him from being the top wrestler in WCW. So, commercial break. Going back to 1999. Halloween Havoc. Y'all remember that time Hulk Hogan laid down for Sting in the middle of the ring. And it's all because of the fact that he didn't want to work with Vince Russo. So Eric Bischoff comes back. And that's also the reason why Hogan came back to WCW. So Vince Russo was tired of dealing with Eric Bischoff. And he told Brad Siegel if he wanted Eric Bischoff to be head of creative... He was like, be my guest. And Brad Siegel was like telling Russo he was in charge of creative still. And that was two days before Bash at the Beach. Y'all know the story about that. That was part of a dark side of the ring. Um... Y'all know what happened that night. Um, I don't want to get into that. Um, But yeah, that was another nail for WCW right there. Um, Y'all remember. The one thing that I remember about that night. Was Vince Russo calling Hulk Hogan. that, That politician in the locker room right there. And they had... um. Shamel part of this too. And that that's really intriguing here because you had Booker T wife. I believe she was a nitro girl at that time. Um I could be wrong, but this is where they actually had Book and we all know that night, Booker T went on and won the championship. And Booker T went on and said, you know what? It took someone like Vince Russo to get that done. Because you know that that was not going to happen. With Eric Bischoff. And of course, of course, you know. That everybody was so happy about a, a guy that put Hulk Hogan in his place, Vince Russo. And that's why Hulk Hogan is all pissed off at, at, at Vince Russo to this day. 
We all knew that Hulk Hogan was a politician. We all know he was, you know, spooling off backstage politics. He was even doing that in the WWF back in the 80s. And all because of the fact that Hulk Hogan, and we talked about this in a, a, a recap, that he had creative control that was in his contract. And that he was going to sue the WCW. And I'm glad that a guy Evans went in there and said that the fans were the most important part. And how WCW failed them by having backstage politics play out in front of the camera. So, we all saw the creative changes again. Because Vince Russo and a committee, they're working together. Because Eric Bischoff and Hulk Hogan went home and they walked out on WCW. Now, this is where you're going rock bottom. Because Vince Russo is all over the screen. Booker then said that he was brought in to be a writer. And now he was writing himself all over the show. It's funny how that works. Then Vince Russo says, As far as being an on-air character, I thought I was better than uh, 80%. Of that roster. Okay. And that. They all put pressure on him. All kinds of pressure on him. To get those ratings. So he decided. You know what. I'm going to get those ratings. Myself. And he talks about the fact that he almost got killed. Because remember Goldberg sparing him through a cage? He almost died from that. So commercial comes. And Russo goes on. And this is kind of the, I believe that. Um, this is the final thing that we're going to talk about right here. So anyways, final segment of this, uh, who killed WCW. Russo was saying that people hated him because they all thought that he was his character. Conan was like, you know what? He put the belt on himself, which is true. He became champion, and somehow, which he thought was kind of sell, self-serving. DDP isn't sure what brought that on other than childhood dream. Because Vince Russo said that he never thought that he was a wrestler. And he uses the excuse that this was just a TV show. And he also talked about the fact that the wrestlers were hurting him on purpose. So, he has an axe to grind with Goldberg. And says that Goldberg had hurt him on purpose with that spear. Go uh, Russo talks about the fact that, yeah, I had a concussion... And he told Goldberg to make sure that he spared him into the entranceway. But the spare happens and Russo crashed into the railings. So Goldberg has to go into the defense here. Goldberg's like, I had no clue how Russo was going to avoid uh, the railing 
based on where he was standing and where the cage wall was gimmicked. Then Goldberg said that Russo would be on the ground if he wanted to intentionally hurt him. Then Russo's like, you know what? Goldberg was trying to hurt me. And that that spare, by the way, that was enough for me to leave that company. And he talks about how the last show, his last Nitro was October 2nd, 2000. And he talks about the fact that when he sees himself during that time, it makes him realize how much he hated the wrestling business. And it does make him depress. And he says the same politics in wrestling exists today. And I agree with him on that. I do. And by the way, when it comes to the bros, I think he said bro 21 times during this episode. <laughs> oh my God. So next week's ex- episode, by the way, let's talk about it. Um, it is going to be the end of WCW. So um, last week, I had talked about the fact that I thought this was going to be a crazy episode right here. Um, this wasn't as off. The walls here, but it was always fun to see Vince Russo tell his side of the story. And then you had everyone else telling their side. Um, the Bash at the Beach thing, 2000, obviously, um, everybody knows about that, um, it, like I said, this was one of the uh, the Dark Side of the Ring episodes. Um, that actually was one of my favorite Dark Side of the Ring episodes. And um, so overall, and thankfully, this, um, we're probably going to go into like 49 or 50 minutes of this uh, recap review. So I actually enjoyed this episode tonight. And... And I'm sure that people in wrestling communities are picking sides and they're they're trying to figure out what's true and not true. So um, this was actually fun. Of course, next week um, we get into uh, the final, um, the final episode of this, which... Um, you're going to get my thoughts and you're going to get my, um, <laughs> you're going to get my thoughts on what happened here and all of that kind of shit. So, um, who I think killed WCW, you will get my, uh, verdict on that. So, um, that's it for this, uh, this week's recap of it. Of course, uh, by the way, last week's recap, Wow. Uh, the numbers were crazy for that. Um, I never thought that I was going to have crazy numbers when it came to this review. Holy macro. And I hope we get that again this week. So uh, let me all know what you guys think in the comment section down below here on this. Until then, next week, cannot wait to talk about the death nail of WCW. Um, until then... Got a lot of videos coming out today. Um, We all know. um, We are remembering the life of. We are going to continue our coverage. On remembering the life of Willie Mays. Also. uh, Some news with the Yankees. um, Regarding Aaron Judge. Of course it was reported. That um, Aaron Judge. Says that he is okay. We all know what happened. uh, In that game against Baltimore. Last night, he got hit by a pitch in his hand. Um, The CT scans and the x-rays were negative. They said um, 
it's okay. There's no fractures. And um, we'll just have to wait and see how the Yankees play it out. So until then, thank you all for listening to this podcast. And thank you for watching or listening wherever you uh, get this. And remember, um, WCW will always have a special place uh, to wrestling fans. And I am honored to share its story.